In this video I will show you how I use my DIY mannequin, which I made in a previous episode, to come up with the design of my first functional parts for my new LED costume. Oh, and also how I model them and how I 3D print them. So let's go! Before even starting this project, I've gathered a lot of reference photos and images to have a rough idea of how the costume might look like. I've got the vision of what I could achieve, but I wasn't really able to make some kind of drawings of my ideas, because I cannot draw this kind of things by myself. So today I will show you how I overcome this problem and came up with the first prototypes that actually works. So let's start with the mannequin. I've used a masking tape and just separate the main section of the body and then I drew a rough outline of the parts. This step was very helpful for me because I could finally see how they could look like in the future. So then I cut the individual pieces from the cardboard and the most important step I've numbered them so I don't mix them in the future. The chest started with the first 10 numbers, then the arm started with a 10 going, going up, so 11, 12, 13. The back will have the numbers going from 20, legs from the 30 and so on and so on. Oh, and the left side is just mirrored from the right side, so I will just use the little tick mark to separate them. The arm was a little tricky, but I eventually made it happen. I took a leftover packing foil and tape from my uh, mannequin build, which you can see right here, or it will be a link in the description down below. So I wrapped my hand and then just drew a rough outline with a sharpie and then cut it to have a precise measurements of my arm or different section of my body. Then I just trace them on the cardboard as usually and this is how they look like now. Then it was time to bring them to the computer and start to designing the pads. So rather than me talking about it, it would be much better if I will show you how I made it. So let's just go straight into Fusion 360. Okay, so we are here in the Fusion 360 and let me just apologize here. This part of the video is not scripted, so it will be uh, really difficult for me to keep flow, but I will do my best job to, to deliver the, the quality here. So the first step, I've imported the uh, uh, canvas to the, to the Fusion, you can do it here. Insert canvas. And this is just a picture uh, that I took from the pads, the, the cardboard things. And I just made a sketch, really simple sketch I will show you, here. Just to, to bring the, the edges and to keep the, the angles right. <coughs> so this is the just this really rough sketch. And you can see here I have a construction line. To, to keep everything aligned, to keep everything uh, in the heading the right direction. This part is really important for me because I want to have the taper going up. So this link uh, keeps everything in the same direction going up. So then I just extruded these parts. I will hide the canvas here. Okay. And this is the how the parts will look like and then i just made the mirror you can do a mirror right here create mirror and you can uh, choose the bodies that you want to mirror along the one plane and i made them uh, in the center you can here i can uh, show the origin the center is right here and i used the this plane to mirror them along. And then it was just uh, the simple part of uh, making the cutouts here. I just made a sketch on each and individual uh, pieces and I've used the offset to offset the outline 
of the pad about uh, two centimeters deep in the in the pad and then I just extruded this part to have the hollow thing oh actually before extruding the holes I uh, exported the files and uh, 3d print the I will say stencil uh, those are just uh, about half a, half a millimeter thick stencils with uh, just an infill and outline to really save the material and then I trace them along the uh, the green uh, styrofoam to have the exact parts that the computer have and uh, now I will have them on the mannequin so that's why you can see the the green parts that are, that are uh, let's say the final design of, of this project okay so let me just uh, skip here I will show you how the the pads are looking like right now uh, I will explain how I did them I know it's it doesn't uh, it's not the the right way to model this kind of things I am starting in the fusion 360 this is uh, the the knowledge I have and what I can provide I know there are million ways to make them better this is just what I did so I copied the uh, the pieces here and let me just hide them and then uh, this is the top part of uh, of the pieces I will just hide to see just the one okay so let's take a closer look of how the pads are looking like right now. Uh, they are a little thick and the reason is that uh, I want the LED strips to lay down here and they will uh, shine on the acrylic, on the plexiglass part uh, at the right angle. Mm, I will show you, you can do here section analysis and you can cut in a piece and this will be a good presentation of how this will look like so you see this is the ledge and it's uh, 45 degrees from from this plane so i will uh, the the leds will shine on the angle and this is really important because uh, if doing that you don't uh, have the individual LEDs showing up uh, you will have the whole piece illuminate really good okay so this is the cross-section analysis and I I wanted to have this piece to fit exactly the LED strips LED strips are uh, 10 millimeters thick so I will do inspect here and you will see right here they are 10 millimeters thick you, you can see here distance 10 millimeters exactly with some numbers but that's okay so I've used a really quick formula to determine the the length that I need and I did it like this I will show you right now okay so I skipped the timeline to show you how I design this this, this ledge for the LEDs so they are 7.1 millimeter uh, deep and I just extruded them uh, the same 7.1 again so that I will have this triangle and then I use a chamfer to cut this part and this is the result that I have the perfect ledge on the 45 degrees to shine the LEDs <coughs> and also I made a really cool fillets here just to have some kind of design okay so this is the hole that the wires will come through so a bunch of wires will come this direction to the first LED strips that will be here and uh, then from this LED strips they will go around here to the second one and then from this one they will leave the pad exactly the same hole as the first one so the 
next improvement I want to make and I'm really working on it, on it is that I want to have uh, some kind of clamp system for the wires that uh, will protect them from ripping out from the LED pads. Mm, I will show you right now. Let me... Okay, so this is the... Um, you can see this is a wall plaque here in Europe. We use this kind of wall plaque and I will show you the system I want to use. So let me just unscrew them. <coughs> and if you open it right here, this is the part uh, I am inspired. Uh, you can see, I will just change the focus. Okay, you can see here they will have this piece with uh, two screws that you can clamp really tightly on the uh, on the wire and this prevents the the wires from ripping out from here from the connection point so this is uh, the part i want to design here uh, just to improve but for now i i didn't do it this is just the prototype but it works so i am proud of it so this is the bottom piece, the electronics part, but the upper piece uh, is where the the plexiglass uh, will sit, and yeah, the plexiglass is uh, is matte. I I sanded it to have a really good diffusion of the light, and I will show you. I don't want to cut the plexiglass exactly uh, the right size for the for the cutout here. I don't want to cut along these edges. I want to cut straight rectangular pieces for each pad and just put them uh, so that this part uh, here will be like a mask. So only the the hollow part will shine through but this is the really cool for me because I will save so much time because I don't need to cut individual uh, angles of the, the pieces I will just cut the straight rectangles this is just half a millimeter that's plenty for me and yeah the <clears throat> I want to have uh, some kind of uh, clasp mechanism uh, snapping mechanism I don't know uh, the bottom piece <coughs> the bottom piece have this uh, chamfer here and here so the the upper piece have this little teeth that they will grab on this uh, chamfer to lock the the mechanism uh, in place so I just made a uh, this tiny little uh, little teeth so that it has the angle right here to to lock against the chamfer of the bottom part but it also have uh, this angles here it's just the fillets uh, so that it's easy to to move to put them together because if this would be a straight part and the angle here uh, that wouldn't really work ask me how I know so the the good thing about this mechanism is that I can tight them uh, I can close them really really tight and this is important for me because I don't want the uh, accident on the show whether I will rip the upper part of the of the of the costume but I can still insert a small screwdriver uh, just uh, here and just pry the pieces and the upper part will separate so for me it works I know it could be better but for me it works and this is the the final design that I want to make and improve uh, some different things so yeah this is the the, the part that I design I know it looks simple but for me it wasn't that straight uh, I had some challenges to overcome uh, in this design so yeah this is the four pieces 
uh, of the of the up section of the chest up section. I know they are not aligned here, but that's that's okay for me. I just uh, want to to have them right here. So then I just exported uh, individual uh, individual uh, top and bottom pieces as the as the one. So I don't will I will not have uh, millions of of files with uh, upper and bottom part from uh, each section. So I have just uh, this is uh, apps one, this is apps two, app, apps three, apps four. So it's really good for me to organize them and later in the future I will have just the mirror uh, pieces everything will be mirrored in the files so organization is this project in in this project is key for me so let's just go to the uh, Prusa slicer and I will show you the settings that I've used to 3d print them Okay, so we are here. I've got these uh, four uh, files. You can see this is the upper part, the, the lower and the lower and the lowest. And I can just bring the first piece here. And you can see, yeah, it's, uh, it's together because it's exported as a one piece. So what you can do is to se select them. And here you have this uh, split two objects. Uh, the, the slicer will recognize the bodies and the components of this of this piece and it will separate them as you want. So let's just do it and then <coughs> you can highlight the, the, the pieces and now they are separated. So I printed them individually. So uh, let's just hide this one. You can right click here to hide. And let's just move it away. So in this orientation, this won't work. So let's just uh, flip this, put it right here. And just for the good visual right here, I will rotate them okay, like this. So you will see uh, better how they would look like. And yeah, I use PETG for for this print uh, 0 0.2 millimeters uh, layer height uh, let me show you i've used uh 20 percent of uh, gyroid infill because you can see the first part the bottom piece the infill matters here so you can see uh, here you have uh, four ledges for the LEDs and to keep them strong uh, this 20% is uh, really good you can see this is whole bunch of uh, infill for this so the, it will be plenty strong and I've used uh, three parameters I've used three to make the uh, the walls really strong so that they will not break so yeah you can see the the finished uh, uh, sliced version uh, this will take 3 hours and 15 minutes and the first piece the upper piece this will take 2 hours so that's really good for me and this is the exact theme thing that I've copied from uh, one print to another to another to another to have everything uh, the same okay so this is how I 3d print them you can see in the b-roll how they look like I will show you uh, and yeah this is the the magical behind the, the the computer part of how this really works so this is how I made this the parts are looking really good and the colors are nice vivid and bright oh and the reason that I didn't print the last bottom part is that I just didn't have time and honestly I don't know if I will make uh, future changes in the design, so I didn't want to waste that much of material. But looking at it right now, I am sure that I am heading 
towards the right direction. I think that would be it for this video. If you like the idea and you are interested in the future updates of this build log, make sure to subscribe to Michał Create. And if you have any suggestions or even questions about the project, post them in the comment section down below. See you in the next one. And remember to create your own reality.